Hi guys, my name is Charles and I'm one of the surgeons at Southpaws. Today I'm going to talk to you about a nasopharyngeal stenosis that we treated with a stent. In the middle of this sagittal CT scan we can see the length 2.57, which is the length of the stenosis. We can see that the normal nasopharyngeal lumen is about 6 millimeters in diameter. Now here we have the patient in lateral recumbency and we're attempting to pass a catheter through the stenosis, but it turns out that the stenosis was completely imperfect and more like an atresia. Here we were finally able to pass an IM pin through the stenosis and then we were able to pass a catheter over the intramedullary pin. Once we removed the, the pin, we were able then to pass a guide wire through the catheter and establish um, patency. At that point, then, we passed a balloon catheter over the guide wire and inflated it. Once we inflated it uh, a few times, we were able to enlarge the um, uh, nasopharyngeal region to a diameter of approximately 6 millimeters. After dilation of the nasopharyngeal stenosis, um, you can see that the contrast on the lower right-hand side completely fills the lumen. At that point, we uh, were able to visualize the nasopharyngeal region and see that the lumen was uh, large enough for normal function. At that point, we put a nitinol stent in the nasopharyngeal region, the idea being that it's going to maintain patency of that nasopharyngeal lumen. We injected triamcinolone into the area to try to prevent stricture and scar tissue formation within the stent. Clinically, the dog was much improved the day after surgery.